Welcome back sa GSEC PH, ang inyong Pinoy and Pasek. Ngayon ay ating pag-uusapan ang exploit. Exploit is the very soul of penetration tester and ethical hacking, which consists of searching for vulnerabilities and weaknesses within an organization system using methods and tools that the attacker would use with the permission of course. In this episode of GSEC, we'll uncover what exploits are in the context of ethical hacking which may include how exploit works, their greatest target, types of exploit kits, where to find and information about non-exploits. Exploits are a popular way to gain access to a system in today's information security landscape. Although their popularity has been waning a bit, distilling things down, exploits are the actual method of the crime that the attacker used to commit crimes against organizations. By understanding non-exploits, ethical hacker can harden the security of their organizations by finding flaws and vulnerabilities before attackers do and addressing them. And by focusing mainly on what is known, they can narrow their scope down to things like zero-day exploit. What are exploits? Exploits are a way of gaining access to a system through a security flaws and taking advantage of flaws for their benefits. In other words, to exploit it, Exploit normally come by way of a piece of a program, software, piece of a code, or a script. They are often delivered as a part of a kit, which is a collection of exploits. You can think of exploits as the proverbial battering ram, where the organization's security is the fortress. The enemy will use battering ram or an exploit to deliver their attack at a weakness in the fortress, or in this case, a security flaws. Just as there are different battering rams and methods to breach fortress, there are different exploits for different situations because not all flaws and weaknesses are the same. How do the exploit works? Not all exploit works the same way. However, the most common method of making contact with exploit is by visiting websites that have been booby trapped by attackers. The worst part is that it is not uncommon for attacker to booby trap high traffic website. So how does this all works? There are two methods. First, there is a piece of malicious code hidden in the website in a plain sight. And the other one, an infected advertisement or malvertising is displayed on a website. When malvertising is involved, you do not even have to click on the ad to be exposed. In both cases, the user becomes redirected to the exploit kit, which is hosted on an invisible landing page. If you have vulnerabilities and exploit kit identifies it, the kit will launch its exploit and drop its malicious payload. The news media favorite payload lately has been a ransomware. For its a recent scourge across the globe. As you can see, the exploit is the means by which attacker reach their ends. The greatest target, in theory, every piece of software and applications is potentially vulnerable to exploit. Security teams spend a lot of resources on taking these resources apart to find vulnerabilities every year. Despite these general observations, the greatest target for attacker are applications and softwares with the highest user base like, for example, Windows operating system. This target rich environment is indicative of the numbers game approach that malicious hackers use as their playbook. Common applications to the target are Microsoft Office, Internet Explorer, Java, and Adobe Reader. Just imagine how many users are on these applications daily. Types of exploit The broadest categorization of exploits separate them into two categories, the known and unknown. Known exploits are exploits that researchers have already been discovered and documented. This means that ethical hackers will have a better chance of fighting them. Normally, they are addressed in subsequent security updates. A known exploit, also known as zero-day exploit, have not been discovered or documented yet. This exploit can go on for years, sometimes without being discovered, and updates will not protect you from them. Another way to categorize exploits are by defining them as being either client-side or a server-side. With client-side exploits, access is gained to a system by some actions of the client. This includes clicking on a malicious websites, clicking on a malicious link and social engineering. Server-side exploit gaining access via server applications where an auxiliary scanner scan your system looking for flows which to gain entry. Where can you find discovered exploits? 
as mentioned on a previous video. Known exploits will be discovered and documented, hopefully thoroughly. The exploits database maintain a public archive that is said to be the ultimate exploit collections. Exploit information is gathered from sub-sessions from the public, and the information is easy to navigate and freely available. Few to mention are ExploitDB, GitHub, Searchploit, and most common is Metasploit. Metasploit is the most powerful exploit tool. Most of its resources can be found in Metasploit.com. It comes in two versions, commercial and free edition. There are no major difference in two versions, so we will be mostly using the commonly versions, which is free of a Metasploit. As a pin tester and ethical hacker, you will be using the Kali distributions or the Parrot OS, which has a Metasploit community version embedded in it, along with other ethical hacking tools. But if you want to install Metasploit as a separate tool, you can easily do so on a system that run on a Linux, Windows, or a Mac OS X, as long you had the hardware requirement. Paalala lang, ang hacking ay illegal at maaari itong makapaminsala sa inyong infrastructure environment. Hindi layunin ng GSIC na ikaituruan ng hacking bagamat ipamulat sa iyo ang masamang epekto nito. Kung nagbabalak ka na sundan ang ginagawa ko, gawin mo ito sa isang contained environment gaya ng lab environment at time-team na pag-uunawa ang kailangan. Sa demonstration natin ito, gagamit ako ng ice room ng TryHackMe. Dito, ibabahagi ko sa inyo kung how likely makagain access ang isang pin tester or ethical hacker sa isang target Windows environment by exploiting the services through a known vulnerability ng Windows applications gamit ang Metasploit. To begin with, ipin ko yung target IP na 10.10.200.213 as it responds, ibig sabihin buhay yung target machine at open ang ICMP port ng machines. So next, I-scan ko ang target machine gamit ang inmap para ay aking malaman kung anong port at services ang open. As a result, 135-3389, an RDP port, 445, a Samba shared, 139-537, an 8000, which is an HTTP services, at marami pa. Since HTTP services, i-attempt kong buksan ang website gamit ang 537 or 5357 port at ang port na 8000 para malaman ko kung ano at para saan ang website na ito.
Unfortunately, nothing much information except the source you requested could not be found. So you try ko ang exploit DB or search exploit for IceCast streaming media server kung mayroon bang known exploit para sa HTTP IceCast services. Base sa response, mayroong vulnerability and exploit since 2004 up until 2010. A header overwrite from Metasploit para sa Windows 32-bit versions. Gamit ang search exploit para i-verify ko kung meron bang updated na exploit yung attacker machine na ginagamit ko. Base sa result, merong remote code execution para sa IceCast 2.0.1. Unfortunately, hindi ko alam ang version ng target ko. So, gagamitin ko na lang ang 2010 ng exploit ng Metasploit. Magbubukas ako ng Metasploit by typing MSF console, then isearch ko yung IceCast. Since isang IceCast exploit lang ang available at 2004 pa na disclosure, itry ko pa rin. Anyway, ganyan naman talaga yung mga penetration tester or even the hacker. Sinusubukan kung po pwede bang tatagos. Swertihan na lang. Kung hindi, there is always another way. I-type ko yung show options para makita ko kung ano ang posibleng isit. At ilagay, base rito, R host para sa target IP, L host and L port para sa attacker IP. At sa demonstration nito, gagamit ako ng port 443 para malito yung mga cyber security to identify the attack. Since mostly ng cyber security, ang traffic ng port 443 is alleged traffic ng HTTPS, kaya hindi gaano pinapansin. So by executing command exploit at nag-respond siya ng meterpeter, ibig sabihin may session na ako at nakakapasok na ako sa target machine. So dito, itry kong i-check sinong user ang ginagamit sa exploit. This case is dark. Itry kong gumamit ng hash dump command para makuha ang mga hashes ng users na nasa machine na to. Unfortunately, it asks for privilege. Ibig sabihin, ang account na dark had a limited access. Sa darating na video ay aking ibabahagi kung paano ang post-exploitation, privilege escalations, as of the moment, until then, see you on my next video. At para sa inyong katanungan, suggestions o komento, huwag mag-atubiling mag-iwan ng minsahe sa ibaba ng video. At kung gusto nyo na gumawa ako ng separate video content para sa Metasploit, mag-comment lang down below. At kung inyong nagustuhan ang video na ito, maiging tingnan nyo rin ang mga nauunan ng video. At maaari nyo rin ibahagi sa sino man na inyong kakilala na nagnanais matuto ng cyber security, infosec, penetration testing, at IT para lalawak ang komunidad ng Pinoy infosec. As always, stay safe, stay secured, at maraming maraming salamat. Merry Christmas in advance and God bless you!